Hey everybody, this is Dan from Mechanical Malarkey. Today I'm going to be showing you how to do a basic coolant drain and fill. This isn't going to be any kind of full system flushing, it's just going to be simply draining the radiator, filling it, and then bleeding the air out of the system. All you need to do this is a way to safely lift and support the car with ramps or jack stands, a coolant drain pan, and it helps to have a spill-free funnel like this for bleeding the air out. It's always best to start with a cold engine so you don't risk burning yourself on hot coolant. Once the car is up on jack stands or on ramps, open the hood and take off the radiator cap. There might be a little pressure in there because the cap keeps the system at a slightly higher pressure. So when you take it off, some coolant may come out from underneath the cap. Now go under the car and find the drain for the radiator. It's often plastic like this. Some cars you may have to remove one of the undercar splash shields to gain access to it. This one, there is a hole for it to drain out of. And I should be able to get my hand in there to loosen it. Sometimes I may need to use some pliers just to get it loose initially if it hasn't been removed in a while. So get your drain pan in position and then open the drain. As I expected, it's a little bit hard to turn, so I'm going to have to get a tool for it. Usually some pliers like these work. You want to be careful because it's plastic. Just takes a little bit with the pliers to break it free. And I can turn it the rest of the way by hand. You don't want to pull it all the way out. Just loosen it until it starts draining fluid. It usually takes a while for the fluid to drain out. Once the coolant is done draining, you can go ahead and close the drain. Now that the old coolant has been drained out, it's time to put in the new coolant. You could just add the coolant using any funnel you have lying around, but this is where a spill-free funnel comes in handy. The purpose of a spill-free funnel is that it locks on to the top of the radiator, allows you to hold a whole bunch more extra fluid while you bleed the air out, and then when you're done and there's still fluid in there, there's a stopper that allows you to remove the funnel full of coolant from the top of the radiator, and then either dump that into a container or into the overflow reservoir. They come with a variety of different adapters to work with different types of radiators, both for how they seat in and for the type of cap. And there's also a height extension, as well as angled extensions if you need to get into awkward places. I know for this car, I need this adapter, this cap piece, and the funnel. So there's the plastic part, then the cap adapter. Lock that on, put in the funnel. Now it's time to fill the coolant. I'm going to be using Honda Genuine Coolant. You can use whatever coolant that you want, whatever brand, as long as it's appropriate for the vehicle. Because some different brands of vehicles require different specifications. As you can see, I can fill the funnel with a lot of coolant, and it just slowly sucks it down as the air comes out. And it doesn't leak around the base because it all fits nicely. Now that the coolant is finished entering the radiator, there is still going to be a large air pocket in the system. So we need to run the engine 
that having this extra coolant here will allow it to suck down coolant as air comes out. So now, start the car. And then I usually like to rev it up to 3000 RPM. Do that until it is at normal operating temperature. One thing I don't like about this car in particular is it does not have an actual coolant temp gauge. All it has is a low and high indicator. So I'll just go until it turns off. The low temperature light is now off, but it's probably still not up to full regular operating temperature, so I'm gonna keep doing this for a couple more minutes. Usually on cars with an actual temperature gauge, somewhere around the middle, maybe a little lower than the middle, is normal operating temperature. So keep doing this until you reach that point. The reason you need to get up to operating temperature is because when it's cold, the thermostat is closed and not allowing coolant to flow, which means the water pump in the engine may be circulating it in the engine, but it's not really going through the radiator, which is what we just drained and filled. So any air pockets that are outside of the engine itself will not be getting flushed out while the thermostat is closed. So we need to get up to operating temperature. Another thing I usually do is turn the heat to a low fan setting, but full heat to make sure that there is coolant also circulating through the heater core. If you are refilling the coolant after replacing a heater core or the hoses to the heater core, then you definitely need to do this to make sure you get the air out of there. Also, by turning on the heat, I can then feel the vent temperature and tell that the coolant is up to temp. Now let it go back down to idle. All those bubbles are air coming out of the cooling system. Once it's up to operating temperature, I've found that it usually helps to dislodge air pockets by doing a few quick snap full throttles like this, just, just push it all the way in very briefly and release. And a lot of times when I do that, I then see a whole bunch more air come out of the coolant. After the car has been running for a while and I don't see any more major bubbles coming out, then it is time to turn off the car and then take the funnel off. So take the stopper, stick it in the funnel, and you can take it off, and I usually transfer it to another container for future use. I usually let all of these parts drain into a coolant container for a while. If it's not difficult to, I usually will remove the overflow expansion reservoir, then dump it out and put the new coolant in there. In this car, it's not really that easy, so I'm not gonna bother. Of course, don't forget to put the cap back on. That's how you do a basic coolant drain and fill. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Follow me on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And read the blog at mechanicalmonarchy.com. Thanks for watching.